In this video, I'm going to go over the K-Weld, this puppy. Now, who is this for? Well, it's definitely for me. This device is for anybody that wants to take apart and fix battery packs. Now, this is definitely not a how-to, put that disclaimer right out there. Please don't short yourselves out or start any fires inside your home. We've all seen these type of battery packs before, and anytime I've had issues with these kind of battery packs, I just pull them apart and I fix them. Most of the time I find it's just one cell inside the pack that's shot. Take and I'll get another 18650 cell, and I'll put them inside of here, essentially fixing the battery pack. As you can see from the side, these screws are not factory screws. This one has already been done. Now, how long did it last after you fix up a battery pack like this? Uh, this one's going on about a year and a half since I fixed this one, and I've had no issues with it since, so. And all it took was one of these. Now, where do you get these 18650 cells? There's quite a few places where you can pick up these cells. Uh, Kijiji Vraj sale, anywhere you can find a used laptop battery, or if you find cells like this being sold on eBay, uh, you can pick up a lot of them. Or uh, I'll leave a link down below to probably the cheapest place I've found here, batteryhookup.com. They do offer uh, a lot of these things. So you can pick up just various different battery packs thrown together that are shot. And then you essentially just pull them apart and measure the cells and take the good cells out and you can rebuild your own cells with that. I think that's probably the cheapest way to go. If you do decide to get these from Battery Hookup, I'll leave an affiliate link down below. That'll get you a 5% discount. Plus it helps support this channel. Back to the K-Weld. You'll notice my connections that I've got on these things. Now this isn't the way they recommend hooking it up from stock, but I figured just as a quick fix or a quick way to get myself started, this is what I'd put on the end. This way I can just clamp it onto the battery that I already have in the house and get started with it. Assembling the K-Weld unit was extremely easy. How easy? Well, I need my video in the background to tell you. So to start out assembling this thing, I first started printing the case that it's that you've seen it in there on my 3D printer. Now this actually proved to be the hardest part of the whole assembly of this device. I hadn't used my 3D printer in a while and I lost the calibration in my STL settings. So I spent a good day and that's all I did that day, probably a good solid eight hours getting my 3D printer sorted out before I could print it. I'm sure those that have a 3D printer right at the start when I showed the video, they were going, oh, that's not good. And yes, that is the video that I captured for it, but I did end up turfing that piece calibrating it and getting a nice built case. And whoever 3D prints, you can go ahead and evaluate it if you like. But I did get a good print on it at the end after I got my settings recovered. If you do pick up the K-Weld, it shows up as a kit. Essentially, you get some power wires, you get the leads and the connectors. You'll end up snipping some wire. And uh, probably about the only thing that most people won't have around is an electrical crimper. I just used the electrical wire cutter to crimp the ends and that worked for me. Other than that, I'm sure all the other tools most people have are just kicking around the house, so that shouldn't be a big deal. Once the leads are cut, stripping and assembly is pretty straightforward. Crimping the lugs on the ends and the instructions that are provided with this device from K-Weld are pretty fantastic. That's all I used to put this together. I did find another use pretty good I did find another video on YouTube but I ended up actually falling back on the instructions from the K-Weld website because they were that good now I did try to use a blow dryer instead of a heat gun for the heat shrink and it kind of worked but it wasn't the trick I ended up flipping over and using a lighter and that did the trick for me just fine that's kind of my go-to but I was trying to keep this clear plastic as clear as I could quite happy with the end result as you can see they look pretty pretty good they're not scorched or anything like that so that's what i was trying to avoid by using the blow dryer the lighter did the trick for me just fine once the wire leads are connected up and the screws are put in the set screws to lock the pins in the whole rest of the assembly of the circuit board is pretty easy k weld sends everything in little packages and bags you can see it on the side here they're really well separated and it's pretty easy to get this thing on going most of the assembly is just involves putting in screws, standoffs, and washers and installing the bars. You can see me doing it here and I'll time lapse it to get you guys the gist of this thing. I also do like that they provide a nice big fuse for this device. I did have some issues with getting this cable on because I went with a thicker gauge and you can see it now. I ended up actually changing them to a different copper lug. That's a much better setup. My first error with this device is seriously was underestimating the power of this unit. 
this thing has crazy amount of power. These clamps that I've <laughs> used as a, just a quick connect, they actually will weld on to the battery when it draws power. The eight gauge cables will actually jump. So <laughs> not for the faint of heart, but it's pretty solid. I mean, the welds are fantastic. I'll show you how it works here in a second. Now, optionally, this thing does have a foot switch that you can put in. So I did put the foot pedal on mine. You can also set this thing to an automatic mode where as soon as you have continuity between your two probes, that it'll automatically throw a weld after whatever you set it to, like a second or a half a second. Now, if you had a bunch of welds to do in sequence, like you're making a battery pack from scratch, that's probably the way you'd want to go, but I found the foot pedal works so nice. I've just been using that. After I had this whole device hooked up on the first power up, it's going to ask you for a calibrate. I just went with the auto calibration. Later on, I used the manual calibration to do the input the wire lengths. And I found the auto was actually just giving me more consistent results because I'm not leaving it constantly powered up. I just hook it up anytime I want to use it. So if you want to see the quality of the welds, we'll uh, take you over to where I hook this thing up and we'll play with some welds. I'm gonna try to get a video of me hooking this thing up so you can see what it does as soon as you power it up. After the initial power up screen, you're gonna get joules. And I found for what I'm welding, if I turn this to put 35 on a 0.1 nickel strip gets me a really good weld. I've heard that about 50 for a 0.2 strip is really good. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm just gonna cut off a little piece of nickel and I'm gonna take a battery that I already had. Uh, salvage out of a different battery pack just to uh, do something to weld on to just so you guys can see how it works. So to begin just put the two probes on. For, for those of you that have never made a YouTube video, uh, doing, saying, and uh, trying to get a good camera shot all at the same time is quite the challenge. So I'm doing my best here for you. All right, I think I got the angle. So just put these two probes together. Oh, let's get that focus right on it. Oh yeah. Once you have your point, just push the foot pedal to make the weld. All right, so there's the finished weld on. Now, you can peel them off, but look at what happens. It actually rips the nickel strip is welded right on to be part of the battery. I'm trying to do this without cutting myself. But yeah, there's no way I'm going to get this thing off. And if you really take a look at the weld, the quality is pretty awesome. It looks like a factory weld. So very happy about that. Super easy to use, put the two probes on and zap away. If you're running this thing in automatic mode, anytime the two pins touch or they have continuity, you don't have to use the foot pedal at all. So you can just set up your battery, take your two probes, use one to hold of wherever you wanna weld. And that's it. As soon as there's continuity, it'll wait to whatever time you had set it on. If you are gonna get one of these devices, about the only thing I'd recommend to you, <laughs> making sure whatever you connect it up to the battery is probably better than this. In fact, I will be changing mine over so that it has lugs like this on both ends so I can put that on the battery terminal because it's gonna end up just giving a better connection. And what I find anytime I do uh, some higher strength welds or after I do a bunch of welds in quick succession, these things actually end up welding to the battery posts as well. So they're just not providing a good enough continuity. If you're somebody that likes to rebuild battery packs or you're a, you're a do, it, do it yourself around the house, this thing is gonna be the right device for you. I have no doubt. To get a quality spot welder for a couple hundred bucks that has this kind of power, you're not gonna find one. And if you do, I'd love to see it. You can leave it down in the description, but I looked forever till I found one. And up until then, all I was doing was soldering. So this one, when I repaired this one, is actually a solder joint. So I'm looking forward to being able to repair batteries properly. If you're curious to see what it looks like repairing a battery from start to finish, I will be doing this one here shortly. Right now, the life of this battery is extremely tiny. We're talking two to three minutes and it's uh, the replacement goes for like an hour on the same settings. So I'm going to see if I can find out which cell is shot in here and replace this one. And I'll leave a link to that video once it's done on either side.